the trail of tomorrow There'll be moss on every stone And each breeze will sigh A doggy's lullaby And there'll be no nights alone The wagon wheels The time will turn Along the trail to the sky They'll roll along Until they reach the land where springs are never dry On the trail of tomorrow Every broken heart will mend And his sunsets glow We'll find the ranch we know Until we reach tomorrow's end <laughs> That Arizona outfit's sure gonna get sore when we pick up that freight at Indian Springs. The matter Crenshaw gets, the better I like it, Mule Shoe. It's just a wildcat outfit trying to horn in on our business. All right, I gotta rest for a while. Ooh. Figure we'll have any trouble getting that load at Indian Springs? When I go after something, I get it. I know that, Crenshaw. But this is on the Prairie's regular run. All right, then we'll see to it they don't make it so regular. I didn't organize this freight line to take a back seat for anybody, not even Randolph. That wagon boss, Tom Baxter, is plenty tough. If he gets in my way, he better be tough. Come on, let's roll him. Hey, here. Fight. We got all the freight business sewed up hereabouts. We did have, but we'll sure lose out on this deal if they beat us to Eagle Pass. What's that got to do with it? If they get on that one-way road ahead of us, we'll never get around them. If we get there ahead of them, they'll never get around us either. If that's right. So we better be moving. Come on. Wait a minute. I just remember it's time for me to take my medicine. What kind is it this time? Nerve tonic. Guaranteed to make a new man out of me. A fallen head, a fallen arches. <laughs> oh, that's off. But it's good for me. Looks like the medicine you've been taking has gone to your stomach. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, you're getting as fat as a pig. Well, so I am. <laughs> what do you know? Oh! <laughs> uh, you had me fooled there for a minute. <laughs> hey, what is that? That's my underwear. I figured on buying a bath when we get to Indian Springs. You won't have time. Come on. All right, men, roll them! Won't have time. I don't know why I ever let you talk me into this freight business. No time to take a bath, no time to rest, no time to eat. Ruining my health. I'm going to quit when we get to back to Blasting. Can I depend on that? You sure can. <laughs> huh? Hey, Tom, look. Renshaw, straight right.
Now let's get that wheel on. Move. Come on. to the unloading. All right. Hey, men, get the canvas off that load. Charlie, water the horses. Oh, oh now get me down, me. I'm stuck again. <laughs> How can you look after the unloading from up there? Well, I only get stuck like this once a week. All the rest of the time, I'm OK. You get stuck up more than any man I ever saw. There you are. Hello, Mr. Randolph. Well, howdy, Tom. I was a little worried about that Indian Springs load, but I see you got it all right. Yeah, we had to beat the A.W. to the Narrows. But here it is, all signed, sealed, and delivered. Well, that's fine, Tom. I'm afraid we're going to have some serious trouble with that outfit. Uh, we can hand out just as much grief as Crenshaw. Well, I don't know about that, Tom. You see, we fight fair. But Crenshaw and that outfit of his, they won't stop at anything. I know. Say, where's Claire? She rode out to meet the pack train coming in from Bowie. So you did get the contract to haul that gold? Yep, Sam Harvey's handling it. Good! <laughs> Come on in while I check over your way wheels, Tom. All right, Bill Schultz, get out of here. Ah. Come on. Oh, it's heavy now. Yeah? Watch it, watch it. Got it? Come too heavy for me. Okay. Got it? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Charlie, give me that empty box. Quick. Hey, boys. Watch Mule Shoe when he gets a hold of this empty. Come on, Mule Shoe. This is really heavy now. Yeah? yeah. Say, am I the only one that's working around here? Come on, get a hold of it. Oh. That's heavy now, watch it. All right. Look out, look out, look out. <laughs> 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 Anybody got any salt? Crenshaw. I'll tell him you're here. Never mind. He'll know I'm here when he sees me. So you let the Randolph outfit put one over on you. Yeah, one of these days I'll settle with Randolph for good. You can throw your personal shooting out of the window. Remember, it's my money you're fooling with and you'll do as I say. Sure, boss, sure. Well, what's on your mind? I suppose you know there's a telegraph line being strung across the country. Yeah, I heard about it. Well, if you can land that holding contract, we can clean up 100,000. What about the prairie line? That's where you come in. I want that prairie line smashed and put out of business inside of 30 days. Listen to this. Anyone placing a bid will be required to post a $10,000 bond with a telegraph company to signify their good faith in accepting the obligation. Well, what's that got to do with smashing the prairie line? It's up to us to see that Randolph is in no position to get that 10,000. I don't follow you. Randolph's got a pack train coming in with a load of gold from Bowie. You grab it. You need all the cash you can lay his hands on to pay off. Oh, now you're talking my language. You'll need help. Now, how about Roy Jessup and his gunslingers from Abilene? Jessup's in town. He's waiting in the saloon for you. I'll see you when I get back. So you say there's a bunch of strangers hanging around the wagon wheel saloon? Yeah. The leader calls himself Jessup. Roy Jessup. Bad-looking bunch of hombres, Tom. Roy Jensen. Seems to me I've heard of him before. They say Claire rode out to meet that gold train. What's on your mind, Tom? Oh, nothing except I don't like the idea of Claire riding out of town alone, that's all. 
Why, there isn't a man in Arizona can outride or outshoot her. I know, but still, a man's a man, and Claire's little more than a kid. Now, Tom, wait a minute. There's something on your mind. Now, what's eating you? I just remembered something I had to do. See you later. <laughs> I'd like to see that fella sold me this underwear. Guaranteed not to shrink. I never did see the like. Hey, get a load of my red flannels. They shrunk. Never mind that mule shoe. Come on. You're worried about Claire, aren't you, Tom? Yes, and about that shipment of gold. You see, I just remembered where I'd seen Jessup. Where? In Abilene. He and his gang moved out when the law moved in. Oh, well, I'd better go with you. There's no need of that, sir. I can handle everything. Well, good luck, Tom. Hunting mule shoe? Huh? Yeah. Uh, you go ahead, Tom. I'll catch up with you. Now, let's see. How do you do that? Stand still, Ronnie. Well, I'm going to give up horses, too. She spotted us. Well, it won't do her any good. Jack, Nick, go down and bring her up here. have given us a slip. Come on, let's get back. You can see what's happened. The next time you want a job done, tend to it yourself. Well? She had too much of a start on us. Yes, you'll ride down and warn that pack train. We can ambush him in Pendle Canyon. <laughs>
Charles got an ambush for us up the canyon. If they attack, spread and take cover behind the rocks. Now, don't you worry none, ma'am. We'll be able to take care of ourselves. Come on, boys. between two fires. One by one. All right, let's clear out of here. Gunslingers tried to ambush you. Oh, well, well, where are they now? They're headed for town. We better get moving. They may have gone for help. All right, men, get mounted. Maybe I picked the wrong man for this job, Crenshaw. Sure. But Baxter came from behind. Jessup and I done the best we could. I'm getting tired of your excuses. Now you listen to me. I'm listening to you, Draper. But don't forget I've got you over a barrel just the same as you think you've got me. Come on, spill it. You've got nothing on me. I wouldn't be too sure about that. What do you think your depositors would say if they knew you were using their money to finance your freight line? If you're trying to blackmail me... Call it anything you like, just so as we understand each other. I'll stop worrying about Baxter. I'll get him out of the way. Well, that's up to you and Jessup. All right. Now, this is the setup. Hey, Tom. Wait a minute. What's no use of me coming to town? I ain't going to have any spending money till payday. Oh, all right, Muleshoe. Maybe I can advance you a little sum. Oh, now, Tom. I wasn't hidden for no loan. Now, don't you spend it foolishly. Well, if I do, I hope somebody kicks me right in the breeches. <laughs> I'm going in the bank. Meet you here later. I'll be waiting. Hello, Elsie. Busy? Oh, no, no. I haven't a thing to do at this moment. Say, is old Flabby Lippian? 
Are you referring to my boss, Mr. Draper? Yeah, old Adam himself. He's the first bandit without a gun I've seen this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> oh, Tom, perhaps you'd better come back a little later. Well, what's the matter, Elsa? Crenshaw's in there. Good, I'd like to see the gent. Please don't start any trouble. Not here. Everybody knows the situation between the Randolph and the Crenshaw lines, and, and since you've beaten him at every turn, it's common knowledge he's out to get you. All right, Elsa. Don't worry. I won't start anything. Now, you do as I say, and you'll have 10,000 in your pocket before you know it. And you'll have my... My depositors have to realize something on their investments. All your depositors will get out of this, they can put in their left eye. back in Crenshaw. What makes you say that? Well, I heard something about a telegraph hauling contract coming up shortly. He couldn't be interested in that, could he? Oh, I don't believe so. Well, somebody must be backing him. He never had $50 in his life, and all of a sudden he blossoms out with a freighting line. Well, I couldn't say about that, but I do know that Crenshaw comes in here every day to talk to Draper, and they spend hours together. Elsa, if you know anything about that hauling contract, I'd appreciate it if you'd tell me. The papers came through, Mark, to whom it may concern, so I guess it's no secret. Well, of course it isn't. It's public business. Everyone has a right to know. Well, I'll tell you all I know about it. About a month ago, I was sitting here in the office and listening to... This sure doing me a heap a lot of good. Say, Flathead. Yeah. Maybe you'd better take some of this. You've been kind of loogie lately. Make a new man out of you. I mean, a new horse out of you. <laughs> Here, open your mouth. I'm going to give you some of this. Here. Don't you like it? <laughs> you do? <laughs> Good, ain't it? Hot dog. And then this letter came to Mr. Draper from the telegraph company. That's all I know about it, Tom. I'll bet anything my hunch is right, and I'm going to see that Randolph gets a chance to bid. It's only fair, but I... Well, Mr. Draper, you're just the man I want to see. I want to talk to you about that telegraph contract. Not now. I'm on my way to lunch. Oh, wait a minute. But uh, if Randolph wants to put in the bid, he'll have to post a $10,000 bond. Thanks. I'll tell him what you said. Well, I got that much out of him anyway. See you later, Elsie. So long, Tom. We're gonna let go. We can't go around. Nothing's over. Let's go. We're gonna let go. There's no more need staying sober. Drink if the liquor's strong enough. And laugh if the joke ain't bad. Fight if the man is wrong enough.
We've done our job steadily gotten by readily you can bet we're gonna let go. Let's go! Hey, that looks like Johnson. Sure does. Hey, Tom! Crenshaw and his men are stealing our freight. You mean the stuff at the warehouse? Yeah, they're putting our loaded. Come on! What are you gonna do, take all day to load this wagon? What'd I do, hire a bunch of old women? Well, we're not mules. Come on, Jack. All right. Buddy, you getting too fat for this kind of work? You're not kidding. Hey, Water! You two, get a move on with that stuff. Feeling this load right out from under the nose is going to kind of even up the score with the Randolph Park with, huh, Crenshaw? If you don't stop gabbing, we'll never get it loaded. Come on, get it on there. Here comes the Randolph Park here. What are you trying to do, Crenshaw? I've got a contract to haul that freight. Your contract don't mean a thing to me. The man on the other end don't care who hauls his freight. I got here first and I... Start unloading or we will. Keep loading that freight. All right, boys, get it off. What do you so much as touches a piece of that freight, I'll blast you wide open. You heard what I said, boys. Unload that stuff. The sooner we go on the road, the quicker we'll be in Indian Springs. Here we go. Hurry up. All right, men. Let's roll them. Baxter, because I figured this fight was between Randolph and me, and Baxter was just doing the job he was paid to. And he declared himself in now, and he's going to get just what he's asking for. Wait a minute, Crenshaw. You say the word, and I'll go out there and blast him. That's what we come here for. Now, there'll be plenty of fun for you later on. But I'm taking care of Baxter myself. I'm going to wait for him right outside of that door. When he comes through with a load... Come on, boy. Your time to dip right, Crenshaw. Yep. This is where Baxter gets just what's coming to him. I'm going to give you one more chance to try your luck. If you ain't yellow, come on down off that wagon. Listen, Crenshaw, I'm taking this freight through, and if you don't get out of the way, I'll run over you. Don't you ever try to stop a Randolph wagon again.
Get rolling, Tom. Yes, sir. You're a big help. I thought you were supposed to be gunslingers. Well, Randolph had us covered from the bank. What could we do? Get ourselves shot up? Uh... Good morning, Mr. Randolph. Good morning, Elsie. Is Mr. Draper in? Yes, I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Mr. Randolph is outside. Well, I'm busy. But I told him you were in, Mr. Draper. Oh, all right. Let him come in. Come in, Mr. Randolph. Thank you. Well, come in, Randolph. Glad to see you. Have a chair. Hello, Draper. What can I do for you? Tell me what you know about a telegraph polling contract. For some reason, you seem to want to keep it a secret. Not at all. Why should I? It's immaterial to me who gets the job, you or Crenshaw. I'm not so sure of that. Baxter tells me that Crenshaw has known about this for some time. If you come in here to start trouble. <laughs> not at all. I came here to talk business, if you'll give me a fair chance. There. That'll tell you all I know. Well, what is it now, Mule Shoe? It's lead remover. Lead remover? Yeah, I forgot to take it a while ago when Crenshaw had that gun on us. So I'm taking it now. <laughs> What's the matter, Mule Shoe? I mean, Mr. I think I swallowed the cork. You swallowed the cork? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You saved my life. But you didn't have to hit me so hard on the back. Now I got a sore back. I have to get some medicine for that. <laughs> Go on, Charlie. Get up. <laughs> My business has made lots of money, but I've put it all back into livestock and equipment. You know that yourself, Draper. Yes, I know that, and I also know that you don't owe the bank anything. But money's a little tight right now, and I couldn't let you have a $10,000 loan, even if you were worth three times as much as you are. Well, you know that you've got lots of money to put out of good security. Well, I was ready to let you have the loan until you shot at Crenshaw. Now it's different. How different? Well, as long as you and Crenshaw were merely business rivals, you had a chance. But now that your outfits have started throwing lead at each other, well, you're just a bad risk. That's all. In other words, you're saying that you don't want me to put in a bid for that telegraph job. Is that it, Draper? Don't you go putting words into my mouth, Randolph. All I said was I wouldn't make you the loan. All right, if that's the way you want it. I'll take my business over to the bank in Carson City, and I'll get the loan. If you think I'm going to let Crenshaw grab that business, <laughs> you're crazier than he is. <laughs> oh, hello, Draper. I turned Randolph down on the loan, but he's going to raise the money for the bond in Carson City. He's on his way home now. Oh, we'll have him off and stop him. This time, I don't want any slip-ups. Let Jessup and the boys handle this. You stay here, Crenshaw. That outfit's been kicking me around. I want a chance to square it. On account of him shooting at you, they'll figure that you'd be guilty. All right, get started. Let's go. Now, I got some new plans. I want you to listen to them. on that point, when he comes along, let him have it.
finish this Randolph. Let's get back to town. Claire? It's Dad. He's been shot. Shot? Where did it happen? He was ambushed outside the ranch. Crenshaw is mixed up in this some way. I'll go back with you. Will you? Frank, I'm telling the horse. We'll get the wagon turned around. You men see that this freight gets through. Johnson, you're in charge. Need it most. I ain't got a drop of no kind of medicine. Dog God, I'll be as nervous as a cat until I get back there. Hey, Chad! Hey, Chad! Everything okay? Clean as a whistle. All right. You and the boys get out of town for a few days till this thing blows over. Well, we got nothing to worry about. That's Draper's orders. All right, we'll be out to check in case you need us. Draper. I want to talk to you. Well, what's the trouble? Do you mind if I listen? This is between Miss Randolph and me. That's perfectly all right. Tom can hear anything. He's in charge here. Well, it's about that telegraph company contract. I suppose you know they require a bond of $10,000. Oh, of course. You were going to lend Dad the money. That's what I came to see you about. I can't let you have the money. I don't understand. Now that your pa is gone, I don't consider your line a good risk. After all, it's for the protection of my depositors. Are you sure you're thinking of your depositors? I'm talking to Miss Randolph. It's because I feel so sorry for you that I don't want to see you lose everything. Why should I lose everything? Well, without the guiding hand of your pa, you don't stand a chance to compete with the Crenshaw outfit. And before it's too late, I'd advise you to sell out to him and at least sell me something. How much is he willing to pay? The A&W authorizes me to pay you $5,000 and they take over your assets and, of course, your liabilities. This company has no liabilities. Now, listen, Draper. You go back and tell Crenshaw that I'm running this outfit for Miss Randolph and we are not selling. Is that your answer, Miss? Yes, it is. I hope I'm not letting you in for anything unpleasant, Claire. I'm not a bit worried. I won't let you down. There you are, Charlie. Put an extra team on that large wagon. Mule shoe. It's working time. It's working time. Doggone it, every time I sit down to eat, you say something about work. What kind of a job is this? Eh? Thank you. 
Hello, man. Get to work. Get to work. Get that loaded. Come on, little speed. All right, clean beds. And beats me. I'll stay. Case three. Here comes Draper. It didn't work. Tax to knock the whole thing higher in the kite. Well, we can get rid of him, same as we did Randolph. That girl's a pretty spunky kid. She'd carry on herself if she had to. No, I've got a better scheme. Yeah, what's that? If the Randolph outfit didn't have any livestock or equipment, they couldn't handle the contract, even though they did get the money for the bond. I'm listening. On our last haul, didn't our wagons bring in a load of blasting powder? Yeah. Well, if we were to pick up some, and tonight, you and Jessup and me, you know I have all the confidence in the world in you, Tom, but... But what, Claire? But I was just thinking, maybe we should sell out to Crenshaw. What do you mean, Claire? Oh, I know it sounds silly, but I'm worried about you and the boys. You know how unfairly Crenshaw fights. Well, he can't do any more than he's done. And we are still in business, aren't we? Oh, I'm so sick, I don't care what happens. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it again in the morning. Maybe you'll feel different in it then. I'll walk out with you. Coming you with you? Oh, I suppose so. What's this? Looks like medicine. Good medicine, too. Wonder what it is. Doggone it, I wish I could read. Well, there's only one way to find out. We're going to find out. Hey, men! Get the horses out of the barn! Take the horses! Keep your hands in there! Get those horses out! Well, got the boys. What's the matter? Hey, what's going on here? Wait a minute! Here! You stay here and get the water. It's my turn to throw some water on the house. I'll talk to him later. Where are you going, Tom? At the Crenshaw and Jessup. They're probably headed for the wagon wheel. I'm coming too, Tom. I'm going with you. I hope this water holds out. They got Draper and he most likely talked. Uh, if any of you men ain't got the stomach for a fight, clear out! Nick, go in there with him. 
winner. The rest of you men come outside with me. for a couple of balls a minute. you got. all over. Keep me covered. I got you, Tom. Keep Tom covered, boys.
know what he wants to do with them birds outside. I mean, what's left of them? Come over to the sheriff. We've got to get back. There's a few questions I want to ask Draper. Come on. On advice that Mr. Draper, our defunct express company, have withdrawn their bid, the Western Telegraph Line hereby awards your company the exclusive contract to do our hauling. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I'm so happy, I don't know what to say. There's nothing much to say. I was glad to be of service. Tom, I want to show my appreciation. I want to give you a half interest in the company. What? And Elsie, I hope you like your new job with us. Oh, well, well, now, no, I, I don't, don't know what... <laughs> <laughs> Was a cowboy at heart, but he never rode a horse. He'd give longing glances that never used force, cause he couldn't ride a horse. He flew to the doggies, you hoo, you hoo, you hoo. He pat them on their foreheads and they danced a moo moo. Wooden leg feet was a cowboy at heart, but he couldn't ride a horse. Was never the one to sleep till his work was done. He'd never infringe on a poor doggy's rights, nor let them stay out at night. He'd kill to the doggies, you hoo, you hoo, you hoo. Kayipi, I, I, oh, and you hear them say, moo. Wooden leg feet was a cowboy at heart, but he never rode a horse. Forgot. It's time for my new medicine. Man, so me this told me that one sip of this would make me strong as an ox. I'll just take two sips. Make me strong as two oxes. Wooden leg feet was a cowboy at heart. He couldn't ride. Gosh, that's good. <laughs> 